Good evening everyone, time for another member update. So we'll start out with the silver chart here on NetDania 10 minute chart. You can see I've drawn an arrow here with the silver flash crash. We're going to look at that when we look at the latest James Turk on King World News. Very interesting analysis from James Turk. But I want you to take note of this chart before we read that because I want you to think about why we see this sort of thing. I've talked about blowing out stops before and James has a very interesting take on this. So you can see we're back up to $16 basically. The flash crash started with a breakout up through 16.10 and then a crash and now we're right back up there. You can see the volume came in here and it, then it came in there. Um, the big volume was not on that drop so interesting again we'll come back to this chart so let's start out with this one <laughs> this is fantastic this is on zero hedge today uh, this is uh, Janet Yellen you can see with the breaking news right there below her Yellen I'm strongly opposed to audit the Fed and we've got a couple of guys back there smiling with their buy Bitcoin written on there <laughs> absolutely priceless kinda love that stuff so speaking of Bitcoin uh, let's get over to the chart here. You can see we're fighting to get above that 2400. Now we did get a penetration of the one trend line that we can draw from about here. Uh, if I can get that bottom. It's hard to get. I may have to expand out. So something like that. So you can see clearly we got through it and the penetration of that line was a pretty severe downdraft but at the same time we kind of have sort of a flat bottom formation maybe forming up here so hard to say uh, no one knows where this stuff is going to go and as members pointed out uh, I did a video saying Bitcoin could go down, down 90 percent and then I did an interview saying Bitco all cryptocurrencies could go up tenfold and it's absolutely true both are true uh, it could do either one so we're in a rally phase right now now this is right after the altcoins were absolutely slaughtered uh, the the carnage was incredible I was personally playing burst and I was trying to catch a bottom in burst and I was riding that thing down did not expect Bitcoin to do what it did uh, so I was buying down and and this one really caught me by surprise I got off a sell of some there but I ended up carrying a lot of it down there I, at one point I couldn't even look at the chart ended up buying down in here and I'm almost back to even but burst isn't the only one you can see it's up 35 percent right now a lot of these were killed uh, grid coin was another one that I was playing uh, it absolutely got killed now it's starting to bounce stratus Another one I was playing, it uh, it went down severely, you can see. Now, if you look here on the change percentage, every single altcoin is in the positive. There isn't one coin that is uh, down right now in the latest 24-hour period. This is measured against Bitcoin. Namecoin is the worst, and it's up 2% against Bitcoin. Litecoin comes in second, and it's up... Uh, four and a half percent against Bitcoin uh, in dollar terms that's forty six dollars for Litecoin now it's kinda interesting to me that uh, let's pull out to the alt chart, uh, alt chart here you can see the move here in Litecoin that move from five bucks to fifty bucks and we're back at forty six so the uh, forty seven actually so the the correction in Litecoin just really wasn't there um, it, it did not really react as badly as the other altcoins did but the other altcoins got killed some of them are down or were down around 70 some of them even 80 percent from their highs I think today's big winner right now is Bitcoin and uh, you have to keep a really close eye on this disclaimer now this disclaimer BCN is currently under maintenance or experiencing wallet slash network issues deposits and withdrawals will remain disabled until a solution is found 
which may require an update from the BCN team. Any updates must be tested and audited before enabling. Now this is boilerplate disclaimer. This is on all of the coins that they have disabled. Uh, let me see if I can find one that I remember that's still disabled uh, Bitmark. Okay, so if we go to Bitmark, see that? Exact same disclaimer. Now what was really shocking was the other day I think it was only for about just a few hours, but Litecoin had the same dis disclaimer. They disabled Litecoin, and that caused an uproar. I saw the message boards, people talking about it. So it's still looking to me like something really shady is going on. I mean, one thing that you could do if you were in a situation where you didn't have enough of the coins for the demand to withdraw them is you could do something like that uh, that's very similar to what we saw on Cripsy so again a lot of red flags being thrown out at Poloniex looking at the uh, market cap we're at about 87 billion. We touched down just below 80 billion. So from 130 down to below 80, we're back up to 87. You can see on the charts here, all of them have taken a bounce. So let's get over to the James Turk article here on King World News. I'm going to read the whole thing because there's some brilliant observations by James Turk. Uh, as I said when I was going through um, the Jim Rickards article, I mentioned that what Jim didn't say, the two things he didn't mention were silver and it's the government. And we get both of those here with James Turk. So let's read this. With the gold and silver markets attempting to rebound after Friday's flash crash in the silver market, today James Turk accused the government of orchestrating the flash crash and also discussed the real reason the government arranged the flash crash in the silver market. James Turk, it should be obvious to any thinking individual that Friday's flash crash in silver was blatant manipulation, Eric. However, the mainstream media is doing a good job of muddling up the picture to confuse people. That outcome is exactly what the manipulators want. This confusion helps cover up their tracks so that they can continue their manipulation by wreaking more havoc on the pre precious metal market in the future. I use the word market from habit rather than accuracy. I'm very mindful of Chris Powell's insightful admonition that is being proven accurate time and time again where he stated, quote, we don't have markets anymore, only interventions. James Turk continues, what we need to do, Eric, is ask ourselves three key questions about the flash crash that the mainstream media has studiously ignored. First, why don't the market regulators invest investigate who sold the silver that crashed the market? Trades are not entered in markets anonymously. Every broker knows who their customer is, and every exchange, of course, knows who the brokers are. All the regulators need to do is call up the broker who placed the trade that started the flash crash and get the name of their customer, and then take appropriate regulatory action against that person to ensure markets remain orderly in the future. Regulators know governments are the manipulators. There is a pretense that markets are regulated, but the reality is that regulators aren't doing their job because they know that governments are the manipulators. So this absence of regulation leads investors to believe that flash crashes are normal events and that markets are expected to act this way, which, of course, they're not. Second, why did this last so-called flash crash happen to occur the moment Tokyo opened? The timing was purposefully chosen. It was all paper. No physical metal traded. The manipulators couldn't risk starting a flash crash during normal market hours when the physical market is trading because they did not want the risk of having to fill orders from buyers of physical metal during the flash crash. Now that's the most important point of this interview. Let me repeat that. They did not want the risk of having to fill orders from buyers of physical metal during the flash crash. And this chart bears out exactly what he's saying. What we would expect to see if this was what he was saying is that we would not get a visitation of those prices again. And you can see the low on that was 1415 roughly. 
and the lowest we got was 15 15 so a dollar you can see a dollar difference between what the price traded at on the paper markets and what people were ultimately able to buy physical silver for give or take the premium so that's I can't emphasize how important that observation is it's so important to realize that they're not willing to risk being filled in physical orders at those prices that means they know that silver is undervalued and they're not willing to sell it that cheap but they're willing to rig the markets and print those prices to discourage people and James is going to talk about that whenever the manipulators fill orders the risk is that the that they reduce their available inventory of physical metal. The manipulation is designed to frighten people. This metal is the most important manipulative tool in their arsenal. Any disheartening by them gives the appearance that the supply of physical metal is unlimited, which of course it is not. In fact, right now both gold and silver are backwardated in their closest delivery month. It is clear evidence that the physical markets are very tight, so the manipulators did not want to get stuck selling any of their physical metal, particularly given how undervalued gold and silver are at these prices. Manipulation is not haphazard. It happens for a reason and is purposefully designed to accomplish an objective, which leads to our third question. What did the manipulators intend to accomplish with the latest flash crash? In a word, frighten. They want investors to think that gold and silver are volatile assets that are better left alone. The manipulators want investors to avoid gold and silver, not own them. Their overall aim is to make investors believe that fiat currency is superior to precious metals and that gold and silver's 5,000 year history as money is an aberration. Now, let me go further with that. Yes, all of those things are true, but another thing they do is they prevent anybody from taking a long position in the futures markets. Now, how do they do that? Well, because most traders protect themselves with protective stops. Protective stops are sell orders that longs have placed below the market. So for example, if you're long silver here at $16, but you don't want to take a massive loss and you believe that if silver goes through fifteen dollars you don't want to be long you're willing to take that one dollar an ounce loss but you don't want to take any more loss so you're going to put a sell stop uh, right here and what's going to happen is if they trade the market down you're going to sell at fifteen dollars or even lower because the stops don't get filled you know, you might get filled at the very bottom there. So what what is the effect of this? The effect of this is that because people are unable to protect their positions with sell stops, then they're unable to go long. So imagine if you're a big investor, hedge fund, billionaire, whoever, and you plan on taking physical delivery of the metal and you ultimately want to do that but you've put up a percentage of the margin and therefore you will have a margin call if the price goes below a certain point so you have a sell stop to get you out well guess what if they trip that stop you're out and you're out at a loss so this has the effect of discouraging people it doesn't just frighten physical investors it also discourages paper investors from taking delivery so it does two things continuing so the manipulators chose to use propaganda. The flash crash was meant to scare people out of their physical metal and hold national currency instead. That effort failed, however, because the backwardation remains, and if anything is deeper now, it's going to take higher prices, not lower prices, to get the strong hands holding physical metal to dump their gold and silver and hold fiat currency instead. All of this relates to one thing, Eric. Either everything I learned in my 50 years of experience in finance is wrong or the manipulators are ignoring the lesson their predecessors learned the hard way from the collapse of the London gold pool in 1968 that market rigging always fails eventually we just don't know when all that the manipulators have left is propaganda but here is what's relevant to the short term 
it is the important message being given to us by the manipulators themselves. It is their choice of timing for the flash crash. Repeating the point I made earlier, it happened when there was no physical metal trading. It happened at the Tokyo Open for a reason. At these levels of undervaluation for gold and silver, all the manipulators have left in their arsenal is propaganda. All they can do is try to scare investors to part with their physical gold and silver, but at these prices, the propaganda doesn't work because physical metal is in strong hands. Even the metal owned by the U.S. government, if there is any in Fort Knox, is in strong hands. That's why they use propaganda for their manipulations instead of opening the vault and selling whatever metal that may still be there. If they did, it would get snapped up by China and other central banks in a flash absolutely perfect analysis by James Turk. I believe 100% that is what happened. It was the government instituted a flash crash to try to discourage gold and silver investors and also to prevent any potential longs from coming in and put setting up a big paper position to ultimately take delivery of silver that the COMEX doesn't have. So let's get back to the Bitcoin price. Uh, we've got a rally going. Uh, the big testing point here is 2400. Can Bitcoin get above that? The big question is going to be, um, you know, are we in that big correction that everybody's expecting or will we get a bounce? And uh, it's looking 50-50 at this point. And we'll talk to you next time.